Here at the 33rd Annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, delighted to have with us Dr. Allison Stopek from the great state of Arizona. She is the director of the Clinical Breast Cancer Program at the Arizona Cancer Center in Tucson. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Let's talk about the, uh, the study that you presented here. Well, at this year's presentation, I extended the results that I had just published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, as well as presented last year, where we looked at an additional four months of extended blinded therapy on our pivotal phase three trial, comparing zolandronic acid to denosumab for preventing skeletal-related events in patients with metastatic breast cancer to bone. What was different about this new data? Well, we've now extended the data. We had the additional four months, and with that additional four months, we were able to determine the difference in time to first skeletal-related event, which was our primary endpoint. Well, last year I had presented that the time for zolandronic acid was 27 months, and now it's about five months longer, past 32 months, and the, so the absolute difference between the two arms is five months. So patients treated with denosumab have five months more, on average, free of having a skeletal-related event compared to zolandronic acid. Why is it important to study skeletal-related events like this? Bone metastases are the most common site of metastasis in patients with metastatic breast cancer. They also cause considerable pain, um, loss of work, addition of therapies such as narcotics that can really affect their quality of life. And in general, they're something that patients are um, severely affected by. When they have a pathologic fracture, fracture their femur, fracture their pelvis, these are life-altering events. So preventing fractures, preventing them from developing severe pain, these are important for allowing them to live as normal as possible with their metastatic disease. Sometimes there is such a great focus on the cancer, but you're focusing on the pain, which is of equal importance to most cancer patients. Absolutely. When you talk to cancer patients, their biggest fear is pain and living with pain. And we don't have great therapies for treating pain. All the therapies we have for treating pain, particularly the narcotics, have tremendous side effects associated with them. They're not as alert, they're not as coherent, they have constipation, nausea, vomiting. So none of these, so we don't have a really great therapy for controlling pain. So the best way to control pain is to prevent it. And denosumab was again, better than zolandronic acid in preventing pain in patients who had no pain to start with. What was the design of the 136 trial? The, the design of the trial was a randomized phase three, double blind, double dun, dummy active control. So all patients got both a subcutaneous injection and an intravenous infusion. And so the patients who were on denosumab got denosumab plus a placebo intravenous infusion and the patients on zolandronic acid got the IV zolandronic acid and a subcutaneous denosumab inject or subcutaneous placebo injection. What was also about the trial is the only drug that was dose reduced was zolandronic acid because you have to do that per its prescribing information. It does have renal toxicity and we did see increased renal toxicity in the zolandronic arm despite the fact that we were dose reducing the patients per the prescribing information. How will this change the way you manage your patients? I think it really gives us a tremendous new option for patients who have bone metastasis. When you think about it, denosumab offers not only a new treatment option, it's a targeted therapy that targets specifically the bone microenvironment and the bone metastases, but it also is easier to give being a subcutaneous injection. You don't have to do renal monitoring, which again saves the patient the inconvenience of having a blood stick. And it's also more efficacious. So when you take the fact that it's better, easier to give, and less toxic, what more do you want from a drug? Where do you go from here in your research? I think the place to go next is to say, well, will it help even prevent bone metastasis? There's a lot of data to suggest that the bone microenvironment is really a place where tumor cells can hide out and be in dormancy. So that's where the, where the tumor cells are actually surviving in the years in between they develop their metastatic disease. So there's now a large body of evidence and literature to suggest that if you change that bone microenvironment, we may be able to prevent bone metastases in patients with breast cancer. And if we even prevent bone metastases, we may even be able to prevent metastases in general, because that could be that place of dormancy, the tumor cells are sort of hanging out, waiting to be reactivated. Denosumab, because it is more efficacious than zolandronic acid, 
is better tolerated and it's more convenient is an ideal drug to test that hypothesis that by changing the bone microenvironment you can maybe prevent bone metastasis from occurring. And uh, we've recently initiated trial to test that hypothesis in patients with high-risk early-stage breast cancer where the endpoint is the development of bone metastases. Dr. Stopek, thanks for sharing some of your work with us. Best of luck in the future and we appreciate your time. My pleasure. You got it.